اهلا وسهلا بكم طلبة الفرقة الثانية ارشاد سياحي في المحاضرة الثانية من مادة اثار مصر القديمة الترم ده احنا بندرس معبد الكارنك وقلنا انه خطأ ان يطلق عليه معبد لان هو مجموعة من المعابد يحيط بها سور خارجي واحد وهو من اشهر المعابد الموجودة في مصر عامة وفي العالم حيث يعتبر من اكبرها مساحة ومن اكثرها تشعبا حيث ان المعبد ده في اثار ترجع من عصر الدولة الوسطى حد العصر اليوناني الروماني وهي موجودة في مدينة الوقر اتكلمنا قبل كده برضو عن ترياد تلوس المعبد وقلنا ان دي ترياد اوف لوكسور سيتي اند اولسو دي ترياد اوف ذس تمبل كورنك تمبل دي جادز were worshipped in this temple, three gods. The main one uh, was called Amun uh, Ra, who uh, is representing here to the left side, representing as a man, and above his head, uh, two feathers. And there are more, uh, more uh, figures for this god, sometimes represent as a duck or as a ram, and uh, also as uh, a scarab. Behind him, his wife, the goddess Mut, uh, one of the goddess of war in ancient Egypt, representing as a woman, and above her head, uh, the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt, and behind them, their son, the god Khonsu, the god of the moon in ancient time. Uh, Kornik Temple is a very uh, impressive and very huge temple, as we mentioned before, and uh, as I mentioned before, it's considered like something like a... Uh, history book because it has a lot of uh, temples, uh, monuments dating back to different periods starting from the Middle Kingdom until uh, the end of the Ptolemaic period and just a little uh, scenes was uh, dating back to the uh, Roman period. Uh, the temple itself is divided in two uh, different uh, huge buildings. The one in the middle, this one in front of you in the middle, that's the main temple of uh, Amun-Ra uh, it's the biggest one. The one on the top, to the right side, this is the temple of uh, God Montu, who was the main god uh, of Luxor uh, city during the Middle Kingdom. And one on the bottom uh, of this picture, to the left side, it's uh, the uh, temple of the goddess Mut, the wife of Amun Ra. And actually, it's uh, very uh, destroyed nowadays, and just a little of the original temple still in very good condition until now. The whole temples of Karnak, uh, covering an area about 60 acres, will kill it acres ma'naha khaddan. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum talabat al-firqa al-taniya irshad siyahi fi muhadara al-taniya min madlit asar masr al-qadim. Uh, actually, the Karnak, the word Karnak, it's driving from uh, different uh, words or different, uh, there are many uh, reasons to call it the area Karnak and the temple call it Karnak. Uh, one of it, it's uh, uh, created by uh, Dr. Ahmed Badawi. Uh, this man believed that uh, this is the, it was a palace in Iraq called Kawarnak and uh, the temple was looking like uh, the Kawarnak, so some of the visitors uh, called this temple Kawarnak. Another uh, idea, we believe that some, uh, arch some historians believe that uh, there was Arabian tribe living in this area called the uh, Kawarnak people, uh, so the uh, called the area the Karnak area 
or the Karnak place and called the 30 Karnak according to those people who lived for starting from the uh, late Islamic period. Uh, but the name of the uh, temple in ancient time it was called Abitsut. Well, Abitsut it means uh, favorite place for the throne or al Makan al Mufaddal al Arush. Kelmet Arush hena lian al Ma'bad dedicated to Amun Ra, where Amun Ra يعتبر the main uh, god of ancient Egypt uh, uh, during the New Kingdom. So uh, the place of the throne of Amun Ra. So they called the temples, Karna temples, the favorite place for the thrones, which mean thrones of Amun Ra and the other gods. Uh, but during the Middle Kingdom, the uh, temple was called Per Amun or the House of Amun. Uh, later, during the Ptolemaic period, it was called Per Ha Sata or the sky above the earth. Those are the modern and the ancient name for uh, uh, these groups of temples, which we call it Karnak Temple. We will start from here, uh, the harbor, and actually it's a discover from about 10 years only. Uh, this harbor uh, and uh, this harbor is connected between uh, the river uh, what was originally connected between the river and the main temple uh, actually uh, what you can see here is a ramp which lead uh, the boats to uh, just so close to the uh, temple itself and actually what we are uh, can see here uh, this is a small artificial lake it's not a uh, not uh, pure uh, original lake but it's just artificial made by the Egyptian to connect between uh, the harbor and the river Nile. This uh, artificial lake lead was originally lead to a tunnel, the tunnel leads to the uh, river. So uh, the boats coming from the river were originally go through the tunnel to the lake and later stop here in this harbor. Uh, the people get down from the boats and start to get to inside the temple to visit it and also this harbor used during the main uh, feast of this temple which was called Opet feast uh, during this feast uh, the sacred boat of the god Amun Ra uh, just starting from this harbor sailing to uh, Luxor uh, temple to the north from here this harbor is dating back to the 20th dynasty You can see more details here for the harbor. Uh, Karnak Temple is a very uh, impressive and very huge temple, as we mentioned before. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's considered like something like a, a history book because it has a lot of uh, temples, uh, monuments dating back to different periods, starting from the Middle Kingdom until uh, the end of the Ptolemaic period and just a little uh, scenes was uh, dating back to the uh, Roman. Uh, this uh, harbor and uh, if we just uh, left the two obelisks behind us, we can just look inside to the temple. We are now at the top of the harbor and uh, we will go through the, uh, the down ramp to uh, this Sphinx Avenue, which lead us to the first time. Kermit Avenue. معناها طريق وسفينكس هي أبو الهول تمثال أبو الهول التمثيل هنا على جانبي هذا الطريق اللي بنطلق عليه سفينكس أفينيو هي تمثل الملك هي تمثل أنا آسف تمثل الإله أمون رع في شكل كبش رأس كبش وجسم أسد وتمثل هذا الإله تظهر قوة هذا الإله والزائرين سواء قديما أو حديثا لازم يعبروا هذا طريق كباش حتى يصلوا إلى الفيرست بايلون أو الصالح الأول اللي ظاهر قدامكم. Here is the uh, Sphinx. Each Sphinx, one of those Sphinx, representing the god Amun Ra himself, uh, representing as a body with a body of a lion and the ram head. Above the chain of the uh, ram, there is a small statue representing the king himself. Uh, the cartouches on these statues uh, dated back to uh, Ramses II and we find some other cartouches uh, belong to the king uh, uh, and uh, uh, this is who the king ruled the country during the 21st dynasty. Actually, we believe that uh, Ramses II who originally uh, cut these uh, statues, erected it here and make this a Sphinx Avenue 
but stole uh, stolen later from uh, Ramses by uh, this king uh, Nijimban. Uh, just uh, be in front of this uh, pylon, we have this uh, small temple which date back to the uh, late period and the beginning of the uh, Ptolemaic period. Uh, we find also this wheel which is uh, used in ancient time to measure the uh, depth of the water in the river Nile because it was originally connected to the river Nile with a small tunnel under the ground and also used as a source for uh, drinking water which used inside the temple for the uh, daily ceremonies. Just in front of the temple and from a few years uh, we discovered this uh, path it's dating back to the uh, Ptolemaic period. Here is the uh, Sphinx, each Sphinx. Uh, we are now in front of the uh, first pylon. This pylon, Kilmet pylon, معناها الصرح, هو عبارة عن برجين كبار. And as you can see, um, both of these uh, two towers of the first pylon are not uh, finished. And that, be uh, as you can see, is dated back to the late period. Uh, so uh, the ancient Egyptian find, uh, didn't find enough money and enough power to uh, finish this uh, this pylon and the two towers actually we have a lot of cartouches and these uh, towers uh, dating back starting from the 22nd dynasty till the 30 dynasty and just a little uh, dating back to uh, Ptolemaic period uh, it's un completely unfinished as you can see so the walls the outer and the inner walls of the pylon it's not polished at all this pylon is considered one of the biggest in all over Egypt. It's about uh, 100, uh, 113 meters high, 40 meters uh, wide, and about uh, yeah, 50 meter width. Uh, this pylon is very uh, interesting that you can see some windows on both sides. And actually, these windows used originally were used originally uh, by the guards to protect the temple. Uh, and even by the uh, priest to tell the people who are standing outside the temple, especially during the feasts, uh, what is going on inside uh, the temple. It's used like a television nowadays. Uh, also, under e each of those uh, windows, we have a kind of a recess. We have here in both uh, sides uh, eight recesses, four in each side. And these recesses were used originally uh, to uh, put the flags and uh, to fix the flags of the temple, the uh, flags of the God himself, and even for the city. Here is uh, a s uh, just a, yani a, scene show, a picture show you the uh, Karnak temple during one of the floods uh, during 1865. Uh, behind is just this first pylon. We can see that the walls are pol polished also. It's not finished. And uh, we find uh, this ramp, you can see it in front of you, which made of mud brick. And actually, this ramp were used originally to build the, uh, this pylon and the whole temple originally in this area. Actually, the ancient Egyptian used this technique, architecture technique, to build the ramp, the uh, uh, columns, the high columns, and so on, by making these ramps and uh, dragging the, uh, statue, uh, the uh, stones on it till uh, the top and built these uh, buildings just uh, register by register until they finished from the whole building. 